Hey everybody, Neil here, the Rider Guider. Thanks for joining me. We're going to do something a little bit different today. As my regular viewers will know, the majority of my defensive riding tips come from my commutes, where I'm surrounded by vehicles, junctions, and, and all that shenanigans. And that's pretty much my riding these days. I'm very lucky in that I can commute on my bike, which is doing what I do now and to and from work. When I was younger, 25, 30 years ago, it's all leisure rides, so we didn't really do much commuting. There was, wasn't much amongst traffic. It was just traffic was something you, you negotiated through to get to the A roads, to get to the roads with the big sweeping bends and into the country lanes. You used to spend time up in the Lake District, up from Yorkshire, up into the Dales, North Yorkshire. And these were our roads um, that we went out and played on. And, a lot of the time was just fast or faster riding and we never really didn't do did anything else really so you get better at it which i'll come to on this particular day i've got some footage coming up i headed down south on a stretch of road known as hockenheim for reasons which will become clear it starts at delamere which is a little town hamlet whatever you want to call it and goes across to the, the big retirement village known as Victor Harbour. And it's a seaside resort. Now the road is fast, as in, you know, it's a 100 km an hour road, which you'll see. There's lots of nice sweeping bends, lots of things to think about when you're going through it. Now, as I'm riding along this road, I realise, look, it's only the second time I've been out on this bike. It's the first time I've ridden this road, so I wasn't familiar with the turns, the bends, or anything like that. So I'm, I'm reading it as I see it, rather than relying on my experience of the road, because I had none. And of course, it's the second time where I've been able to ride and exploit my bike to any percentage of its performance at all, because as I said, all, all I do is commute. So we're gonna have a chat en route, and uh, discuss a few things that'll keep us from hammering riding a bit quicker than what we're normally used to. We'll cover a few positions as we're riding down the road and, see, and you'll see why I'm moving about and where I'm moving through the lefts and right hand bends. As I say, I'm a little bit, I suppose, out of practice, which you'll see, but you'll see what I'm trying to achieve. Now, it's a 50 kilometre ride. I've edited quite a lot out. You'll see I've sped up some of the footage, if you know what I mean. So you're not sat there waiting for me to cover 50 k's. And a quirk of that editing, it appears to have cropped out the, um, the clocks on the speedo. So um, yeah, we'll see how it pans out. You won't better see what gear I'm in on the rev counter as I'm going through some of these bends, but you better hear the engine. So let's, let's crack on. Let's discuss some safety aspects as we're riding through. And uh, I hope you enjoy the ride. This is Delamere on the Triumph Sprint. Okay, hello. Right, I'm going to talk to you about this little uh, section. Um, this is a start from Delamere to Victor Harbour. I'm already chirping on. And uh, as I said, I've never been down this road. And it's only the second time I've ridden the bike uh, other than commuting. And I've not been down. I've got to read it as I see it. I've been on situations where I've done the same Sunday ride for years and years and months of, of riding every weekend up to say the Devil's Bridge in Kirby Lonsdale from West Yorkshire and you, you're dialed in straight away you know the bends and unfortunately I think if you're on a road that you are familiar with you can become complacent and I think it's quite good in a way that you go out and ride roads that you're not familiar with but don't that way you, you, you learn to back off. There's situations where you can get too familiar with the road and what you're not taking into account then is the added danger of things happening on a particular road around a bend that you think, well, it was clear last week. There's no reason why it won't be this week apart from the fact that there's 20 cows that have just wandered out of a field and they're in your path. Or in Australia, we'll have kangaroos. Now, this is probably, you can see why they call this Hockenheim, this section here is just pine trees galore. You can see the sweeping left on bend, it's quite, it's not tight at all. And this is a good road, there's, there's nothing too twisty. There's, 
it's actually quite a forgiving bit of uh, width, really. You've got plenty of space and you've got good views through the bends. But look at the look at the scenery here. It's beautiful. But the issue I had as well, look at that, is the light flashing through the trees. And I was backing off. Uh, I'm doing 100-ish kilometres an hour. And the thing we've got to look at now, what the what I wanted to talk about on this particular upload is your your brain processes and how your brain processes what you're actually seeing and at the speeds that it will the perception it has i'll take you to I'll give the example of the the motorsport races uh, be on in cars and, and motorcycles they have an ability to process which makes the best drivers the ones that do this the best they process the speed and their environment very quickly and very well to the extent that it all becomes slow motion and everybody's got that to an extent but if you're like me and you spend your life commuting as i said previously at 40 to 60 miles an hour or 30 to 50 whatever and then you suddenly go out for a ride with your mates on a weekend and everybody's doing this on faster roads your brain will not be up to speed and this is why the TT riders and your F1 drivers and everybody who rides in motorsport or drives in motorsport for a living practice and it's not just about learning a circuit it's getting your brain your grey matter up to speed example that I'm talking about now I'll take you back as I said 25 years ago 20 even longer I'll admit it I was riding too fast regularly and it became the norm and I'll tell you, kangaroo, you're up, dead. Arrow, boom. Um, that's, the, that's the dangers you've got here. Um, the norm became 140 mile an hour, 130 mile an hour. And then speeds became natural. If we'd have got caught, we would have been locked up and they'd have thrown away the key. But this was wasn't just me, it was half a dozen of me, my mates, and some very fast, talented riders that have gone on to do far, far better things than, than I've done and become massively successful helicopter flying motorsport people. Just amazing people that could ride the, the, the wheels off anything. And I was riding with these guys, and it wasn't just that group, there must have been three or four hundred people in the county riding the same every Sunday morning at silly o'clock. We'd get up and get the bikes out and go and play out. And we never got caught. Nobody came a cropper. But you got used to doing fast speeds, 140. And then it became 150 at times. Not average, but there were a lot of periods of time during the rides where we were well over 100 miles an hour, 160, 170, 180 kilometres an hour and some. And what happened is you get tuned into it. Now, I'll give you an example. The perception between 140 for my brain process, miles an hour, and 150 miles an hour, there wasn't a massive difference. It still felt fast, but it felt comfortable. And then when I started speeding up a bit, the, 100, the, the, the difference between 150 to 160 miles an hour became like, it was like oblivion, it was crazy. That extra, from 140 to 150, I could process quite quickly. And I, and I didn't feel much difference, but the, it was only 10 miles an hour. But then 150 to 160, that 10 mile an hour felt like I was doing 175, 180. That 160 felt so much more faster than just another 10 miles an hour, because my brain process wasn't actually coping with it. And it takes a while for you to get dialed in. And that's what I was talking, that's what I'm talking about here is not just getting on your bike on a Saturday and a Sunday 
and expecting your brain to be able to process the speeds you're trying to ride at, especially if you're in a group getting egged on because you're just gonna come a cropper and it'll, be, it'll look frantic to you. And when it's starting to look frantic, that's when you're on the edge and it's when you're danger. Your bike will be capable and you might be capable, but not until you get dialed in properly. And you can't ride like that. You can't have that feeling of being frantic and racing and doing all that when it's gotta be smooth. And if you're not riding smooth, you're going too fast because you're gonna end up in a tree, dead, in a morgue, or very seriously injured having gone through a car because you overcooked it into a bend or you, you left your braking too late or you didn't read and process the road well enough. I went on from them sort of speeds to doing 175 miles an hour on, on, a, on the odd occasion. These are public roads, it was bloody crazy. Um, and then, of course, going back to what I was saying, having got used to going to that sort of speed, the 150, 160, almost felt a little bit normal. Life changed, I survived it, and it's not something I should be proud about. He was a good driver, by the way, this guy in that U. He'd spotted us a mile away, and he had a dodgy indicator, but it was working. But he put in a really good, learn, a good early indicator to tell us what he was doing. So, brownie point for him. So go back to what I'm talking about, this perception change the differences between speed and how your brain processes it. You can't just go out there on a, once a week and ride like that. And a lot of people are doing it. They just go they're riding once a week and that's all they do is go out and ride like fast. And they come back and they get off and they'll be shaking the adrenaline. And it's a great buzz. But the chances are you're just an accident waiting to happen. It's not something you can do. It's just get onto a bike and ride fast without getting dialed in. This is why, as I said, as I said the, 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 the road races, they go out not to learn a circuit. They know the circuit. They might be already aware there's been a road repair on a particular left-hand bend at the TT and they know just to miss it by half an inch because it's going to upset them. It's going to upset the suspension. It wasn't there last year, but the roads get repaired. But what they're actually going out to learn is get the brain processing again. Because they'll get off the bike, they'll spend a couple of weeks off and the brain doesn't process as quick. So they're going out there to get dialed in. That is what it's about. See how on, on that section there, you notice I move to the left for that truck coming the other way and then back out again, giving that bit of space there. I hope you're enjoying this journey while I'm chirping along. You might, not, you might have to watch this again, which would be good, I'll get an extra view. But you can see as I'm, you'll see some of these sections, I've sped up the video, so you're not having to um, sit out 50 k's of riding and I've, I've cropped a lot of it out. So you can't, you're not bored. Uh, here's a section here, now you've got your solid white lines. I've seen lads do this and I could have safely overtaken there, but it would have been illegal. There's no point in antagonizing motorists. I mean, you've, you've got a solid white line, plenty, for a motorcycle, plenty of space to overtake, but don't ever do it. It's not worth the money because you're going to get fined. People will dob you in. Wait, look at this for a cool, clean overtake. And I've got a good view down the road now. I've got my single, my broken lines. Get out, have a look, blast. Get the, get the overtake done quickly and safely as possible. Give them a wave. Okay, I got in just before the solid line. Happy days. And it was a perfectly safe manoeuvre. Don't be tempted to, as much as slow as cars are sometimes, if you can't get past without going over a solid line, don't go. Simple as that. Coming through this section now, I've got a left-hand bend. You've got to keep your eye on them, them sides. They've all got them. But look how wide and open it is. It's a lovely road. You can see why it's a popular ride for, for, for the motorcyclists towards Victor. Nice section. So, yeah, the message. Let's put it out there. Not go out on a weekend blast and expect to be able to negotiate the faster sections without an increased risk unless you're getting dialed in. You're not racers, none of us are on, on these roads. We can't afford to, to do it. We've got families to get back to, haven't we, really? You know, and there's, there's a lot of young riders come out and the, the problem is, it's like, it's like the fast and the furious, isn't it? Everybody then in their 
souped up cars, goes out on a weekend and starts hooning about and they end up crashing the cars. It's not a game, it's not a movie. This is real life, is this sort of stuff. And the TV, we've got, we can watch Isle of Man and then we get on his bikes and think we can do it. We can't, not, all, not everybody. And that's the problem. I think we've got, we've all got access to millions and millions of minutes of bloody racing and you can get on view cameras and we think we can do it and we, we, we can't. That's slow compared to McGuinness and Hutchie and Hickman and all these guys that do it for a living and they just look at this and go, oh, you're fantastic, you know what I mean? To me, I'm happy at this sort of speed these days because I'm not down in. I'm not going to be doing it anymore. And none of us should be, to be fair. We can go out and have a Sunday blast, but know your limits, know what you're doing, and ride. As I said, the, the sign is if you're feeling frantic and you're, you're on the edge, and if that's what you're doing, you, you, you're so close to a catastrophe. You really are. You can't afford to, to do it. Look at this car coming the other way. So I move straight across to the left. I stay left as well because I've got a left hand bend now. Remember, your road positioning. It's important to learn to negotiate these bends. Look at your vanishing points. I did an old, oh, early days of this channel, I did a, what is actually quite a crap upload of, of vanishing points, but it's, it does explain it. Um, I'll do a better one one day as to what you should be looking for and how fast you should be going through some of these bends. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I've got a few minutes left of it. I think the message is there. It was a lovely day, wasn't it? It really was. And as I say, we had a nice, easy, even easier ride back up from Victor Harbour that day. It was just a coffee spot. Have a look at Victor Harbour, Google it. And uh, have a look at the town. Lots of whale watching and the likes down there. You can go down at certain times of the year and uh, see, the, see the whales and their calves frolicking off the coast. It's amazing. What an amazing place. And dolphins, you'll see them breaking in the waves at Middleton Beach. And uh, yeah, nice place. If you're in South Australia, get down to have a look. As you can see, it's, it's good country. And today, no kangaroo seen apart from that dead one back there. So yeah, there'll be lots of, lots of people watching that know this sort of stuff, but there's a lot of people that don't, you know, and consider what your brain's doing and how it's processing. All right. Hope you're enjoying yourselves, everybody, and stay safe. What I'm gonna do is leave you to watch this. I reckon I've got about another minute or so. I'll watch it with you. You see how I went out to the middle of the road there? Get a good view down that stretch. Cross to the left to give space to that car coming the other way. You don't want to get close to him. You can see the coast in the distance. And when you see it on a screen, it looks faster than it actually is. Because you're, you're concentrating not on the, you're seeing all the trees, you're seeing that, and if you just put your head and look, look sideways, it's, it looks like you're flying, but 
you're actually not. And that's part of the processing as well. This is what I'm talking about. Car come in, give them space. As we go over this brow, you'll see the uh, the coast. And down into, uh, towards Victor, you can see the, uh, the coastline there. Beautiful day. All right, guys. See you in a bit.